from IBM, we actually work with some partners, and this is uh, uh, a robot that uses Watson, and it's uh, working as a concierge in uh, one of the Hilton hotels, knows how to interact with customers and you know, greet them, talk to them, personalize the service, and so forth. And these are real technologies. The key here is we're dealing with massive amount of data. On a daily basis, you know, there is uh, 2.5 exabytes of data. That's uh, a billion gigabytes of data that's being generated. Now, what's interesting about this data is that it's not structured. It's not data that often fits into your neatly organized spreadsheet tables or databases, right? You're talking about data from uh, tweets and you know, video and uh, voice messages and so forth. So it's very tough to analyze that, that amount of data and that variety of data coming at you at a very fast pace using your usual programming kind of methodologies. So that's where you know, cognitive computing comes in, it can you know, deal with the data, it can learn from the data, it can interact with you. And obviously, a lot of applications in the banking and retail sector, where there's a lot of client engagement, even in uh, oil and gas exploration, wherein you can you know, layer data from satellites as well as from sensors uh, that's coming from the drill heads, by the way, which are extremely expensive, right? So which means that in real time, by using these technologies, you can actually do much better exploration uh, by working with the machines. And also in healthcare, I mean, oftentimes we talk about clinical data, but that's actually a very small amount of data that's in the electronic uh, record uh, systems. What's even more interesting is the type of data that we're gathering now about socioeconomics, about people's behaviors, patterns, how much they walk and what they do and so forth. That's massive amount of data. Now, just imagine if you can piece all of that together, make sense out of it and personalize, uh, you know, your medications, in your advices, and so forth. On top of that, by the way, you can add genomics data, right? Now, all of a sudden, the way we do healthcare and the way we take care of ourselves becomes completely different. If you look at, you know, thousands of, you know, uh, MRI and X-ray scans that come out on a daily basis, it's very difficult for doctors to actually look at them and, you know, make a decision that's efficient and accurate. However, like based on uh, machine vision advances that have been made, you can actually automate this whole process and make much better decisions when it comes to looking at these images. We are working on what's called a neuromorphic computing chip, and that's based on you know, how the human brain works, actually. So we're building neurons and synapses and training that chip. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, the Lawrence Livermore lab in the US actually purchased one of the systems and they're actually now working with it. And we think that that will have massive impact in terms of you know, self-driving cars, in terms of uh, you know, even our phones. You know, imagine this type of technology being miniaturized and embedded into our phones. So it will change how we deal uh, with technology. For me, uh, while leading the lab, what's even more important is not just the commercial returns and how we're impacting in you know, different industries, but are we tackling grand challenges? And I think in the context that we're in, in the African context, it's quite important to think about how are we really impacting healthcare, making it affordable? What are we doing about our infrastructures? Can we personalize education to you know, poor children in rural areas and make it accessible? How are we transforming agribusiness and mining and that's what we think about on a daily basis and there is quite a, lo a lot of challenges.